Hey group, good morning. Welcome everybody. We are working on something today that uh, I don't want to say I don't encourage the use of coin co-validators, but you know they have their they have their ups and downs. These were built this style pretty much uh, in the 80s. That's when they started, so pretty old. Um, these are BA 30 B's, BA 50 B's, MAG 50's, MAG 30's, BA 32 SA's, BA 30 SA's. Um, they're all pretty much the same. They use the same belts, the same rollers. Um, and you know, we rebuild these things when the shop is slow. Maybe in the afternoon before we're going to knock off, we'll uh, put three or four of these up on the bench and get them ready and clean them up and uh, anyways but uh, so let me show you kind of how we do it and, and how we start and uh, hopefully you'll get a little knowledge on uh, these Coincos. We also have the belt kits on our website. I think I'll put a link uh, to the Coinco belt kit so in case you want to just do one or two units at home and try it uh, you know rather than buy a huge quantity of belts we buy them by the hundreds so that's why we split them up and we can sell you one set. So anyways here we go I get these in from my sister store in Oakland and they come in by the pallet. I get a hundred or so at a time just for uh, the fact we don't want to have a lot of space being taken up by these. So what I do, and I grabbed these this morning out of the uh, what we'll call the core pile. Okay, Now I test these on my CT3 tester because it has on these, let me get to where I can see what I'm showing you, it has the two plug-ins, okay? This is the 34 volt side, this is the 110 side that you would predominantly use in a single price machine, but I plug them into this one because that's that tester is more convenient for me. So we'll see what happens. I, I test these first to be sure if I can get them plugged in to be sure they at least come up. Something works. And I can sort of tell what's wrong if it's a sensor or a board. Alright, so here we go. I can almost tell you right away that being as I'm getting a flashing light, you see it here, that something's wrong with this. It goes to auto detecting and it, it does not fire up. So, see, nothing happens. So let's go on to the second one. But we'll take this one apart and we'll see if it's something obvious. Sometimes a wire comes off. Alright, so I'm going to set that one aside. This one, as you can see, the mount is broken. But we just changed those. We put another another used one on that's in good shape. So, all right. Hopefully, we get a second one that will fire up. If not, we'll go get another couple. All right. Push test. Pick 24 volt side. Okay. Now this one made a good noise. It came up. Solid light. Yep. See here. Solid light, that means it's it's gonna do something. It should start to take the bill. Okay, that one's actually uh, working, but we are going to we're gonna check and see if it takes a five just on the outside chance it's on new currency. Which most of them are not. These were probably all out of single price soda machines, so anyways. What we're going to do now is we're going to take these apart. Let me get my little cup for the screws. All right, guys, I use a. Let's take apart the one that didn't work at all first. Okay? What I normally do is I start with the bezel. I get all the parts off that are going to be in the way 
because we need to take it completely apart to change the belt. I strongly encourage you guys to buy a light duty, like a 4 volt driver because when you go to put these things back together you don't want to have a big heavy DeWalt like I have because when you go back in the screws you can strip out the screws so alright no money now we have three more screws here that hold the power box on Alright, now on this one here I noticed it did not have the little plastic mounting plate so this board is loose. Okay, So what we do, we're going to take apart that board. Now first thing, everything's plugged in here. Sometimes I get them and the transport is not plugged in. So this, you know, visually everything looks like it should work although it didn't. Okay, take a look in here, nothing's in there. This actually looks somewhat clean, like maybe somebody... Yeah, it's, it's dusty. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to set it aside, and we're going to check the board. But we're going to check it with this one, because we know this has a good board. We don't have a fancy coin tool tester which I have seen but it's been a couple of decades ago where you can just plug in the components so what we have to do is kind of the old-fashioned way is we get a good working unit like this one in my hand and we just check the components in it and then we label them good bad or iffy and different So, what I'm going to do here now is I am going to take this board out because this was our unit that worked. Okay? Now, let's get these sharp pieces out of our way. Beauty is you don't have to have the thing completely reassembled to test it. We always have everything kind of hanging open here on the bench. Okay, so now see this last screw here? This releases our board. And I'll show you what this holds. This is tricky. See how fast I took that out? Well, first time you go to put that back in, it's not as fast but I'll show you that when we do a little reassembly. So Okay, so we know this one works. So now, let's take the board out of the bad one. And I always mark these because <coughs> I end up with ten of these on the bench and I forgot which ones were which. All right, so this one right now is no good. So we put NG. If you guys ever get a component back from me, guys, and it says GTG, that is my old mechanic, David. That was his code, GTG. Anybody know what that stands for? Good to go. It means we have tested it. Alright, now the working unit is going to get put in the non-working unit and right away we're going to be able to tell if that other board is bad. Okay, if it doesn't fire up this unit then we'll try the board in the other working one and then we'll determine whether we have either two good boards. Alright, so this one came off the working one. Now, get this one over here. I'll 
apologize for my hand there. Okay, now I always kind of do things in the same direction, and by that I mean I lay the boards the same way. There is a tie wrap that has to come off because you'll see in a minute we won't be able to get it out of the cabinet. All right, I start with my end one. I skip one because that is the transport. Okay, that's why I'm leaving a, a blank one here. Now, I go here. Now the next two are the stacker and the transport. Now, you can hook those up backwards, but I always remember that the red one, red and white wire, is on the end. I don't know why I can remember that. This is the ground. So as long as you put the red one on the end. Now, these go, or should I say these come out of the transport, okay? Here's the one that goes in the, the missing space right here. And that is the one there. Now, one of two things is going to happen, guys. It's going to work or it's not. And if it doesn't work, something's wrong with this board because it didn't work in two units. And, of course, we know this is a good unit. So let's fire it up. Now, this one has a billbox button. I don't know if you can see it. So, for this to work right, it has to have a bill box on it. A lot of these are not the case, okay? Now, it's going through its test, and guess what? I still have a flashing red light. See it? Right here by my thumb. Okay, so this board, something is wrong with it. Um, we're not, get, we're not going to get into troubleshooting this board on this video, because that's another video. So we'll shut that off, and unplug this, and I'm going to mark it bad, and then I'm going to set it aside, and we're going to disassemble this BA-30B and get to the belts, okay? So this one... I did this in reverse. There's something wrong with this case. <laughs> I did it in reverse, guys. Disregard what I just told you. This was the working unit, and to double check, because I marked that other board no good, and, I, and that's what I meant. See, if you don't mark these things, you get, or you can get confused. Okay? So just to be doubly sure, we didn't make a mistake, which I don't think we did. Again, I'm going to hook this board back up, make sure it's our working components here before we go any further. We'd hate to rebuild the complete chassis assembly of a validator if in fact it's not going to run. Maybe it has a bad sensor, a bad motor. Okay, so let's hook this one up. Wires, here's our transport. And last but not least, our Second transport wire. Okay. Now, guys, you can hook these up to a, uh, a vending machine. If you have a machine in your shop, you don't have to have a tester like this. You can hook it up to the MDB side. Okay. All right. One click. Two clicks. Now, this is going to say no box because it needs a box. See, I put the box on it, reset it one time. This will take a dollar, or it should. Nope. I was wrong. Okay, this is the bad unit. Okay. So, I will mark it now that that complete unit has got something wrong with it. Or I will just mark it won't accept because it does power up. But once it gets to the next stage of taking a bill. Alright, so we will put the NG on this one. And now we will get back to 
I usually put it on the stacker assembly because that doesn't go anywhere. All these other components come off. So, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take apart this good unit. And I'm going to show you how to get to the belts. That's the, that's the fun part. You can see how cluttered your bench gets very quickly. Now, we have all the hardware off of this and the only thing left to take off other than slide out the transport okay and it comes out cleanly because there's no wires hooked up to it now see this what we call intermediate plate this is what the bill box mounts to there's, a, there's some tabs see them all along here let me show you how I start everybody has their own way so there's no there's no right way I reach in here like this get my small screwdriver and I start at this end tab okay you have to kind of do it in order now a lot of times they just pop right out once you start it but sometimes you have to help it along okay now you inspect this be sure there's nothing broken see all the tabs if any of these tabs are broken guys or the most common thing that's broken is this that holds the box if anything's broken any of these four tabs here that hold the bill box if any of that's broken you just throw it away okay we have we have piles of this stuff but we do have piles of stuff that we have thrown away now so what we got here okay now we are ready to take the belts out see where well, the chassis out of the case you have to spread these, okay? You have to spread them, and then it slides down just a little, maybe not even a quarter inch, okay? Then sometimes these are a little tough, and once again, guys, the first time you're gonna you're gonna be cursing these things. So I set it on the bench. I have to fish this wire through. Okay, and it's always going to be encased, but that protective encasement is pretty pliable. Okay, now see how easy that comes out? It doesn't go in that easy. So that's that's another that's another part of the video. Okay, need to make a little room here. Now we have. All right, first of all, see that broken wire? Oh, I see what they did. They jumped these so a bill box switch is basically uh, defeated. See those two blue wires? Those have been jumped together. So, anyways, a bill box in this unit will not be needed. Now, let me show you one thing while we're looking. See down here? couple little tabs now those are supposed to be sticking out so what I need to do if people string these things put screwdrivers in them or anything else they become stuck like this one so what I'm trying to do here without breaking it is push it through from my side still isn't coming out I have a real there we go All right, the sight down there is kinda tough so now see these that's so people can't string the bill in other words the bill comes up like this and then once it gets past those you can't pull it back by putting a piece of tape on it okay it gets stuck and they'll probably end up tearing the bill in half so if those things see they have a spring on them if those are stuck you need to go through the other side and just gently give them a little push so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take off the stacker plate which is a specialty Torx I don't know what size it is. 
but it's small, okay? Now, some of them come off with a torque screw, and the others come off with no screw. They just kind of fit in a tab, and you'll see the difference. Okay, so we take off. They're never very they're never very tight, so you don't have to. So now what we do, you take off the stacker plate. See these little tabs? Those come apart too for really good cleaning, and I'm going to show you how to do that. They're two pieces. Okay. See how easy that came off? See the little tabs here? Anyways, pretty self-explanatory. Once you put it back through the slots, they fit like that. Okay? So anyways, I'm going to take out all those. You'll have four sets of two, eight pieces. Like I said, don't let them take off and hit the floor because you may have a problem finding them. Alright, so then we have our stacker plate off. These come in plastic as well as the aluminum. I kind of prefer the plastic. Now this one is not worn out, but what happens is when that roller goes around in here and it pushes it up and down, you look on the end, it'll start wallowing out the ends. Okay? If those ends are wallowed out, the validator sounds really clunky. I mean clunky. So don't reuse that. Get another one, throw it away. Now, belts. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Okay, what I normally do is I start off with the side that has the wire because I like to leave it hanging over my bench. Okay? I just pull it off the idler. Once again, you don't want to lose all these on the floor. Okay? Now look at the shape of this belt. Okay? That's not round. You'll see the difference when we put a new belt in. Now, see these rollers? One, the small one, the big one, and the little smooth idler. Okay? Those come off just like that. Lay them on your bench. Now, what we're going to do here, guys, I'm going to shut the camera off a minute because I go outside and I kind of brush this off. And uh, what I use is I have a dedicated uh, paintbrush that we don't use for painting. And I just, you know, soft bristles, and I just go through. Now, you'll notice I have not taken off the other side of the belts. You know why? You take off this side, you lose all your tension, and then these shafts. See the three shafts? One, two, three. Then they fall out. Then you lose your stringing device. It's got a little spring on there. And the first time I put one of those springs back on, it took me a better part of an hour. So, anyways... I take off one side at a time. I'm going to shut the camera off and uh, come right back on. Okay, now what I have done in the intermission, see this belt? That's brand new. Kind of see the difference, don't you? I have reassembled the one side. Okay, that's how the belt goes. Has a little idler wheel there. You have to be sure you get it around all these wheels or it will bind. Okay? Now, this side is the original belt. And I'm going to show you how to reinstall it. And the reason I didn't do it is I didn't want to lose my shafts. Okay? So, once again, the old belt, you can see that sat in the same position for a long time. So, what I normally like to do here, roll in here, is I put a paper towel, or not a paper towel, I put a shop rag, one of these, uh, I don't know what they call them, microfibers. I get my foaming window cleaner out and I take, I take the little rollers, I do the big one and the small one, not necessarily in that order. Then, I take the little idler that has no teeth on it, okay, and I clean it up. So now, back to the bench where we started then I'm going to just clean up so this is pretty clean but I'm going to clean this up I just give it a little spray 
Um, sometimes you find all kinds of foreign matter and material and bubble gum and everything else in here, but this one's pretty good. So we're going to give it the give it the light dusting. I've already brushed it off outside. So now we put it up here like so, and you put. this out of the way you put your wheels back on okay I just happen to know where these go okay big one small one little idler now everybody has their own ways of doing it things you may see somebody else's video that's different than mine you got to pick what works for you okay some people are left-handed some people are right-handed I go around the three wheels okay like so. Then I drape this over the idler wheel and this is really tough to see because the idler wheel is black. So is the rest of the cabinet. So what we do here, see belt is on. This is the idler that I was talking about. That's the one I put on last. And then what I do to make sure these shafts are flush with the outside of the wheel. Sometimes they'll be sticking out a little bit. Just push them back through the other way. Okay. Now I am going to clean this plate. Okay. I give it a little spray. Then I get all the old grease off. Some guys use grease. Okay. Well, I'm the guy that doesn't on these things because in my mind grease attracts dust and makes a hellacious mess and you're not going to go a long time before between rebuilds on these for the simple fact that it's going to be a mess, it's going to be dirty. Okay, so now that's all cleaned up and what we do now, these are not bad, these little black plastic pieces. Okay, these only go one way, kind of hard to explain, but I'm going to show you this one when I put it in. Okay, see the little tab here? Can you make that out? Well, that little tab goes on the inside because that keeps it from coming off. <coughs> okay, so let me put the rest in. So once again, the tab always in, like so. Put our little keeper back in. Be sure they're free floating and you don't have one crooked or stuck. You can do it. Everything you can do on these you probably will do and like if you've done them like me you'll do them multiple times because it's just the way it is. For me, it depends on how many cups of coffee I have or how late in the day it is. Alright, one more to go. We haven't dropped any yet which is good thing. Okay, so now we have all four of them. You can see how they go up and down freely. Now, this goes on the short end. When I say the short end, right here, that always goes towards the bottom. Okay, so if you have this laying here on your bench, it goes towards the base. Okay, those little clips. There's very little pressure. There's no strength involved. If a five-year-old can be trained to do it, you just kind of push them down. So now what we do is we get out our little torques. We put in our little shoulder bolts to hold it in. Like so. Like I said, guys, these are not very tight. And when I mean not very tight, you just barely give them a little snug. Okay. One more on this side. Now this side here, see where the sensor board is? This is a sensor board for the stacker. To get this in, you have to kind of push this board. Oh, <laughs> the width of two business cards away just so you can get the screw in. Okay, so don't, don't push it like a U. Just do this. See it move? Then you can get the shoulder of that screw in. I got a little piece of fuzz on there. Anyway, so now we are done 
with this end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the camera off briefly and I'm going to clean the case. We always look for broken cases. This is the area they're going to break, right in the middle. Now, if it's just split, you can use this case again. Now this is a good case. Okay, we try and use all good cases because when you put this back together, guess what? That plate will hold it together to where that split really won't mean anything. But sometimes there's a chunk gone out of there and we have enough of these plates and cases. So anyways, stand by for cleaning. All right, all cleaned up, remove the stickers. Now the fun part. Try and do this as well as I can with showing you everything in the camera range because this is the part that's a little a little tough to explain. Okay? Start like this with it on its back. The wires, all of them, have to go through there. Okay? Now I'm kind of holding the wires with my left hand make sure they don't come back out at us okay now see how I have that chassis center section here are my wires well now they all have to go back from the back side through that hole that's kind of shaped like a D so what I do is I start with the end the end two that are only two wires and the ground which is only one wire okay I get those in my hand I feed them through. Now, I've got a good start. I get the next longest wire, which is this one. I can't tell you how many are on it. I put it through, and I keep going. Once again, you do this the first time. You might be talking to yourself. and do it about a hundred times. You'll be doing it without looking. So now, I have all those wires through. Okay? Double check, make sure you don't still have a wire on the inside here. Now, the sheath, you have to kind of crunch it up and fish it through that opening, okay? It has to be straight, and I got a little bit lucky. If it's turned in here, maybe... 180, 360, straighten it out. But this one is straight. Then, many ways to do this. Okay, these tabs, you have to pull them apart. I usually do this on my lap, but it's a little hard to see. Okay, so you pull those tabs apart. Now, the most important part, see the gap here? Click. Now, the tabs are still not in yet, okay? You have to get underneath, click, the tabs go in. Don't be frustrated if it's real painful the first time. Now, guys, what I'm going to do here so this video doesn't... This is a pretty clean lower transport, although I'm going to take it apart. But I want to test this so this video doesn't get immensely long. We're going to get our good board, which is not that one, it is this one, we hope. Okay, now, I'm going to plug everything back in. And see how we did. Okay, once again I lay the board the same direction I did it the last time, only because that's just the way I do it every time. Now, being as this is a little bit final assembly, you want to you want to kind of go through these wires and be sure they're not all kinked and, and out of out of order. In other words, crossing each other or you could end up with a, a space problem. In other words, you don't have enough wire to get all the way out. So these were not tangled at all. This one here and then you have your last one here. And normally if you're like me, you normally put it in backwards, although I was lucky. 
None of these will really go on the wrong way with the only exception of the N2, but if you do that, it just won't work correctly. It'll try and run the bill while it's the other one's supposed to be stacking and vice versa. So, all right, guys, so let's do this. Let's power it up. And we've done one of two things. We don't have power here. So we have either built the wrong chassis or I started with the wrong board. So real quick, <laughs> real quick, I'm going to try this other board. And then if this doesn't power it up, our other chassis was the good one. And we will rebuild that one real quick. Alright, as you can see, you can kind of go through these pretty quick. Some people just do belt changes, they don't mess with the rollers, however, um, I kind of recommend you do both when you change belts. Alright, one last time. Connect. We push auto test. All right. We did exactly what I didn't want to do, and that was <laughs> we rebuilt the one that either has a bad transport. Let's do this. Let's do this, guys. Let's check our transport now, because that that we're 50/50 on the transport being possibly the issue. Okay. So let's take this transport out. Okay, we're going to try the one that comes out of the other one. Now this is how we test for parts, guys. We get a good working one, we check it, we check all the components in the working one. So, if this happens to power up and run, then it's the other transport that's bad. If it doesn't, then we have a problem, uh, possibly with the lower sensor in this one. Okay, so let's plug it in. Put power to this guy. And go again. Nope, the problem being as you can probably see the light. See our flashing red light here? What I'm going to do guys is I'm going to shut off the camera and then I'm going to go back to our original chassis and I'm going to put belts on it and then uh, show you the reassembly. So stand by. Okay guys, I made a I made a YouTube mistake here and I Turned on the camera with the radio in the background, which is a no-no. All right, so to show you, we're powered up. We have a solid green light. Pardon me, <laughs> I'm thinking of something else. Solid red light right here by my thumb. Hopefully the camera picks that up. And let's grab a couple bills. One anyways. And this one has the little button for the bill box on it. So we have to have a bill box for it to come on. There's our dollar. And it takes it and it sounds good. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to reassemble this. Maybe show you a trick or two. What I normally do is I start with them on their back like so. There's a little ground wire here, which has to go on there. Now, what I do, this is the set of hardware for two validators, so we're going to have some spare parts there, but I like to start with a little cup. 
That way I know if I'm missing a screw, but I kind of know how many go on each one of these. So you start these. There's our ground. The center one goes into the case. Then this guy here goes down below. Careful, you don't over tighten these. Now, our face plate, our mask, any style you may want. Two, three. These are the ones that are the, the chiseled ends. Have a little bit of a bevel on them. All right, the third one goes on the bottom. Keep in mind, guys, there's no there's no forcing needed of anything, okay? Now, the fun part, okay, is our box. I'm going to spray this off real quick. This is better known as the power box. All right. You start with the far end where our two wire plugs are. Come across here, be sure you're not pinching any wires. Everything lays down real nice. Now, a tie wrap is required. two of these to keep together. Cut all the excess off because that will be in your way. Now, remember this little fancy guy? See that deep slot? That's for the two wires. This is going to be a little tricky on me because to keep it in the camera angle, I'm going to do this. I normally like to do this on a towel on my lap. Okay. I know it's a little hard to see, but there are four holes in the power box. Okay. This kind of goes in at an angle. Okay. Once again, I know this is not real visible, but you'll see the four holes. They go in just like that. Now, Remember that last screw we took out? That's where it goes. I normally have a screwdriver handy. Then, uh, that, went, that went pretty smoothly. That is something, guys, that uh, it, it, it's a little tricky the first few times you do it. So now, I take that off so I can a little better angle here. What I normally do is if I can find a hand screwdriver. Now to put this power box on, I start with one of them down here. There's three total. One, two, and then one up here. I think what I'll do next, guys, is I'll do a video <coughs> where we have a clean 
working validator first and what I'll do is I'll just do a belt change on it so it's a little quicker a little shorter of a video all right let me wipe off our box power it up see how we did guys the first time you do one of these it might take you every bit of an hour like it did me the next few times You'll probably do it in 20 minutes all right so there we have our VA30B let's put power to it prop it up sort of like it's in a machine they don't work as well I have found on their back let's see where's my dollar Sometimes lunch money is a little hard to find around here, being as we have a subway across the street. All right, one push, putting power to it, and here it reset. And in three seconds, that red light should come on. See it? Red light. That is saying I am theoretically ready to go. So, dollar bill. Good to go. Those belts should last, depending on the volume of your location, five years, something like that, for about 16 or 18 bucks. You've done your own rebuild. So, guys, I know it got a little clunky in the middle because we kind of misread our, our good and bad chassis. But, uh, anyways, we survived, and uh, hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, you know the drill, and uh, click that bell. You'll be notified of all these tech videos. Doug at Doug's World Tour. Vending channel out.